What's up, people? It's your girl, Adeola. This week, I want to start out talking about the president of Djibouti, Ismail Omar. He recently announced that he's stepping down in 2016. Now, the problem is that um, nobody believes him. Before he became president 12 years ago, yeah, he's been in power for the past 12 years. Mm -hmm. So before he came in power 12 years ago, his uncle was the president. You know, they do this thing like it's a family business. And then when he came to power, the first thing he did was to arrest his only opponent at the time, and that was Musa Idris. And so by the end of his first six-year term, nobody was willing to run against him. So he was the only candidate for presidency during his second tenure. And of course, he won. Last year, you will not believe this man changed the constitution of Djibouti to allow him to run for his third term. Seriously? And in 2011, before the election, he jailed the opposition parties twice before the election. So by the time election came, all the opposition parties like boycotted the election because, you know, they didn't know what happens when you oppose the president. And now he's saying that he will be stepping down in 2016. He said, I swear I'm stepping down in 2016. And it's like, really? Yeah, right, yeah, we'll see how that goes. When 2016 comes, we'll see what happens. This is so typical of African leaders. They get in power and they don't want to leave. What is it, by the way, with African leaders that when they get in power, they don't want to leave? You guys know Muammar Gaddafi was there for 42 years before he was killed. You know what, let's talk about those that are alive right now. Tilda Obiang of Ikutira Guinea has been in power for the past 32 years. And it's the same thing with Jose Santos of Angola. He's also been in power for the past 32 years. Even Mugabe, at the age of 87 and dying of cancer, you know, he recently announced that he's running again in the next election. Like, what? After 31 years of being the president of Zimbabwe. The same thing with Bia of Cameroon. He's been in power for the past 29 years, you know, making sure his wife keeps looking good with all those wigs. <laughs> <laughs> and the list goes on. Museveni of Uganda has been president for the past 25 years. And the king of Swaziland has been in power for the past 24 years. The president of Burkina Faso, Blaise, he's also been in power for the past 24 years. That's exactly what I'm saying. All these African leaders, they get in power and they don't want to leave. And Nigeria is not left out of the list. You guys remember when Olusegun Obasanjo was president of Nigeria? He tried to change the constitution so he could run for the third term. This is besides the point that he was a president in the military regime and then he was elected during the democratic regime and re-elected for his second time and then he tried to change the constitution so he can run for the third term? Baba Yabo, you're not the only one. Come on. You can imagine our present president. Good luck, Jonathan. As soon as he got into power, his first agenda was to amend the constitution to make presidential terms from four years to six years. Can you imagine? Think. Is this the only thing that they get concerned with when they are in power? Now, if you look at the list of all these African leaders that I just mentioned, they all have a reputation for corruption. They get in power, they rule for decades, making sure they embezzle all the money that they can. What a shame. I'm just keeping it real, y'all. Speaking of embezzling money, you guys know that since independence in 1960 to 2010, Nigeria has reportedly lost 500 billion dollars to corruption. Uh, money is coming to me. Money is coming to me. I'm not saying 500 million, I'm saying 500 billion dollars. Uh, money is coming to me. Money is coming to me. You know, I'll tell you some things that 500 billion dollars could buy. Right now, Nigeria would have additional 38 universities with endowments the size of Harvard University. Can you imagine having extra 38 universities in Nigeria? The size and the standard of Harvard University with all that it has? Oh my goodness, that would have been wonderful. Can you imagine? The whole world would be coming to Nigeria to study instead of Nigerians going overseas to study. You know, you find us everywhere, you know, US, Europe, Asia, Ghana, Nigerians go to Sudan to study. I'm not kidding you, they go to Sudan, to Sudan. no offense to Sudan, but you know, Sudan? 
One of the reasons Nigerians go elsewhere to study is because of the strike, you know. You get in school and you don't know when you will get out. That's so sad. And that's one of the reasons why Nigerian students continue to protest. The Nigerian government and the Nigerian youth have broken up. No longer would we be taken for granted. The bedrock of every nation is education. So says John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Also, if this money had been well used, Nigeria would have about 5,000 hospitals, the size and standard of Mayo Clinic. If you don't know about Mayo Clinic, they are one of the best here in the U.S. With branches in Minnesota, Arizona, Florida, this hospital is huge. It's research center and everything, you know. Just imagine Nigeria having 5,000 of these beautiful hospitals. That means every state in Nigeria would have more than 100 of this type of hospital. That's apart from all the hospitals that we have right now. Just imagine how life would be in Nigeria. If this money had not been stolen, Nigeria right now would have about 1,500 aircraft. I'm not talking about just any aircraft. I'm talking about Boeing 747. You can imagine everyone in the world trying to get on Nigerian airways, you know, just because of the luxury. Be like, oh. I flew Nigeria Airways today. Mmm, it was good. But um, today, nobody wants to fly Nigeria Airways. I don't. Mm, tafia. <laughs> Apart from that, we would have 225 space shuttles. That means right now, Nigeria would have been one of the countries sending people to the moon. How cool would that have been? And the list goes on and on. We would have additional 32 million primary schools. We would have 400 million computers, you know? And the best part of it is that if this money had been well used and they decided, you know, let's invest it in my Rolls Royce. <laughs> Do you know that about a million Nigerians will be riding Rolls Royals? Yeah. I could have got me a Rolls Royce, people, you know, like, ah, oh, yeah, that's right. That could have been the case, people. A thumbs up this week goes to Botswana for being the least corrupt African country. That's according to the 2011 Corruption Index of African Countries done by Transparency International. It's so funny because Botswana is not one of the richest countries in Africa and yet it's the least corrupt. In fact, all the countries that topped in Africa, they are not part of the rich countries. Botswana, Bhutan, Cape Verde and Rwanda. According to this index, these are the least corrupt countries in Africa. And the award for the most corrupt country in the world actually goes to two countries, North Korea and Somalia. Speaking of Somalia, they get the thumbs down this week because, you know, the lawmakers decided to exchange punches, right, in the parliament. <laughs> what a shame, those old men, you know, punching each other right, in the parliament. Anyway, they left two of them with minor injuries. Mm -hmm. I say right on Somalia, that's like an initiation to the club. If you know the club I mean, that's the club of countries that the lawmakers exchange punches. It's, this has been happening for a long time. It's been happening in Nigeria for so long. It's like finally Somalia decided to join the club. If you don't know what club I'm talking about, take a look at this. Before I leave today, I want you guys to see a little bit of Burundi.
All right, y'all, it's been real, and I'm keeping it real right up in here. Until next week, I'm going to see y'all later. Peace out. Welcome to Fosby Luxury Hotel. At Fosby Luxury Hotel, we offer excellent service. Our rooms have all the necessary facilities to make your stay comfortable and memorable. You will also have access to internet service, breakfast, 24 hour power supply, poor air condition, free international calls, free tire pumping service, and free car battery charge. So, what are you waiting for? Quickly visit Fosby Luxury Hotel. We are located as number one at the Nirobar Michele off Rajirasaki Road, Fosby Estate, Amuo, or the Fifest For more information or reservation, please call us. Us on 080 75 78 7135 or 080 99 90 0601. You can also take advantage of our online ongoing promo at www.fossvhotel.com to make your reservation and payment for your favorite room, which attracts a discount rate. Please note, rooms are reserved based on first come, first serve. Fossvhotel experience the home of comfort. They come, they come.